please step back. It's not ready yet. Don't touch that. Don't disturb the machine. You might free it and doom us all. The mutation tank is done. I'm going to show you how I made it out of garbage and dollar store toys right after the drop. Who here loves their chow mein noodles? Their crispy, delicious chow mein noodles? I do. <laughs> and so I'm going to utilize this empty uh, chow mein noodle container. It is the perfect size to go with my mini brands clear plastic tube. So this is going to uh, be the, the basis for the mutation tank. I'm gonna start by cutting the chow mein noodle container in half. As you can see, they go together really, really well. The first problem though is obvious. The tube goes way too far down into the container. There's not enough tube or mutation tank itself. So to fix this, I'm gonna grab some of my two inch XPS foam and cut myself a puck. Uh, this puck's gonna be able to fit down inside the can and this is going to lift up the mutation tank. And uh, it also affords me the chance to put some lights in this build. I'm gonna cut a cone uh, depression into the puck of foam and I'm gonna uh, kind of drill or bore out a, a spot for my LED. I'm going to uh, cut a slot in the wood, the six by six uh, piece of wood for my base and that way I can slip the battery in and out for the LED. Uh, then I'm going to uh, poke a hole in some tin foil and then hot glue it down. The tin foil works really well as a mirror and it's going to amplify the light really well. Once I get that hot glued down, uh, I'll fold it over, trim it up where needed, and then I'm going to uh, take the bottom of the mini brands tube, uh, just make sure that all the measurements are looking good, looking solid, and then use that to uh, trace out and then cut a circle of that uh, plastic stitching or granny grating and this is going to act like a uh, like a mesh floor that whatever figure or, or creature or beast you have in there it's going to be standing over the light and hopefully illuminating uh, in a really cool way then I'm going to take that bottom piece and rough it up with some sandpaper on both sides. And this is going to create uh, uh, a cloudy opacity. It's gonna disperse the light from this LED. You can see as I cut my hands and kind of uh, cut some of the light that's coming in on it, it's a, it's a much better effect. And then I'm gonna glue the one of the sides of the chow mein noodles down. It's now gonna shroud my, uh, my LED. And, well, I'm not happy with it. <laughs> I'm not happy with it. Uh, I think I, at this point, I had um, been able to turn it on um, when the, all the lights were off, or I struggled. I either struggled to, or it was pathetic. Either way, more light. <laughs> so I grabbed a string of LEDs from the Dollar Tree and I, I just want to tell you, tis the season for the string of lights. They've got them in multiple colors, and for $1.25, you get 10 LED lights in a string. They operate on two batteries. I love them. They pump out the light. Um, time to completely redesign this thing. I ultimately take out the one green LED, and um, I take a, a cutting of the puck and use it as a frame. So I'll glue it up into the, uh, I'm gonna call it the shroud, the other part of the chow mein noodle. Then I'm gonna take the first four lights of the string next to the battery pack and glue them up like at the corners of the circle. And this is gonna maximize the light they can give off. And then I'm going to uh, glue a cap down behind the lights. I'm actually gonna cut a piece of the old puck uh, to do this. And then I'll cut a slit in it 
to feed the cord and the battery pack through and then I'm going to glue this down and once it's glued down I'm going to flip the whole darn thing over and I'm going to coat the uh, other side in the tin foil so that I get that reflection uh, bit that I like so much. Then it's just making sure everything's glued into place, making sure the lights work, and then I'll glue that battery pack in there as well. With some super glue, I'm going to glue the granny grating down to the bottom of that mini brand tube, and then I'm going to cut a just a big enough slot to feed the remaining six lights through. Once they're through, I'm going to grab the hot glue and hot glue the base into place. Now this is where I really, really screwed up. <laughs> I, I completed it. <laughs> I put the, uh, in fact, I screwed up even worse than this. I, uh, I fed the wires through and then I, I glued them in place to the second puck, the top part where the, uh, where they would glow through. And I forgot that um, I had to have them through the tube. So I had to cut the top of the tube and squeeze this puck through. And uh, luckily I was able to do that. But from this point on, building, painting became very difficult. <laughs> on to the fun part. The so many dollar store toys gave their lives for this project. So just a quick moment of silence. Hurry up and hit that like button for these poor, poor dollar store toys that gave their lives. <laughs> it was for a good cause, I promise. <laughs> the first one is a, uh, a little chihuahua and his dog mech. Pretty cool, and uh, I'm going to make great use of it. I take the limbs off, cut the head off of the mech. Little churro, the chihuahua, is just fine. He remains unharmed for this video. And uh, the shape is exactly what I'm looking for uh, for the bottom of my tube, or my muta, uh, my mutation tank. And with some hot glue in the right spots, I'm gonna glue this down, and it's gonna do this really cool diagonal flare out from the tank itself. I'm gonna try to keep this motif in mind as I, uh, make additions to the base of the tank itself. Um, I then discover that the a set of the legs on the mech look really good turned around with the part cut off. They kind of sit just right and it looks really cool. So I end up making that a permanent part. This pack here from uh, Thunderbolt, some accessory pack, has some really nice pieces I end up using. Next, we've got this Covert Ops accessory pack. Most of it uh, is guns and helmets and things, a little too out of scale for the project, but this hover sled is absolutely amazing. It's the right size, the right shape. I knew I was gonna use it right away when I saw it, and then when I flipped it around and saw the back side of it, I fell in even more love with it because it's got so much more texture on the back side. Now I'm super excited about these next couple. I've had the uh, the vehicle sitting in my collection for a long, long time, and I have been absolutely dying to rip into it and use these bits and pieces. So I figured this was my chance. I was so excited, and I'm so glad I did. This thing, a dollar twenty-five. Uh, I mean, I think I got it for a dollar. Humble brag. <laughs> But even now at $1.25, it is still an incredible toy for $1.25, uh, but, uh, but a ton of great pieces to kit bash with. Um, the engine with the seat, it, I'm going to utilize that. It fits the general shape and theme. It's got some crossbars I'm going to utilize. And those tires, I'm going to utilize those for the top of the tank. It's going to uh, look fantastic. I was so pumped to have uh, finally opened it up. And then it also has an accessory pack. And the accessory pack had some incredible pieces too. Some panels and things. In fact, uh, the accessory pack has these two triangular uh, shapes, panels, uh, that I managed to cut free from other pieces. 
I think they have like a defining signature shape to this craft. Um, they're almost an iconic feature to it. So these two, if you don't, uh, yeah, here it is, the armor pack. If you don't pick up any other pieces um, to do some kit bashing with, the the um, good the hero vehicle and its accessory pack have just some an amazing pieces to do some kit bashing with. Highly recommend it. Well, it's that time of the video. <laughs> Are you enjoying what you're seeing? Do you like it? Smash that like button for me. I really appreciate it. Do you think I did uh, an amazing job with this video in particular and you want to thank me in a special way? Maybe you want to buy me a coffee or something like that. Hit that super thanks. I'd really appreciate it. That would be fantastic. I've got some links down below, some affiliate links for Amazon. So for example, if you wanted to get your hands on these 6 inch by 6 inch wooden squares to uh, base some of your projects on, go ahead and use those links. Amazon gives me a little cut. That'd be awesome. Hit my subscribe star up where you can get your hands on my pen and paper RPG game. I think it's fantastic. High drama, big time strength. I love my combat system. I bet you will too. Uh, give it a try. Thank you so much. If you want to keep seeing videos like this, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll be sure to get every single video that I drop. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Back to the video. Here you can see these are the two panels that uh, are in that accessory pack and they line up in such a way. I actually uh, use them to create kind of a, a box where you might assume some uh, electronics and, and vital components to this mutation tank are housed. Absolutely love how all these pieces come together. I've put some time in it off camera. You can see I've added the vent. Here are those two uh, really sharp looking panels that uh, give it this really cool asymmetrical look. And I even crack into my dollar store uh, off-brand <laughs> blocks, Lego blocks. Um, and I just add them all over the place. Here you see a shot of the finished creation, including the top. Then I'm gonna wrap the tube because I I kind of screwed myself over by putting it all together. I had to wrap the tube when I uh, went outside to primer it because I didn't want uh, any primer to get on my clear tube and it worked. Uh, I hit it everything with a flat black primer and boy it looks so good with all the colors coming together. Um, around the, uh, the base of the cans i had a corrugated cardboard as well so i cut and, and buried a ring to kind of ease the transition from top there uh, i spun the top you could see i used the tires from the vehicle kit to great effect then with the entire thing based in black i'm going to hit all of the mechanical components with the silver i want it to have a real strong metallic look I know normally you'd do a gun metal, um, and I had thought about rusting this out, and I'm still not opposed to it. I just thought it's kind of in the middle of the lab and it's being utilized right now. I wouldn't think it'd be rusty, maybe leaky and, and gross. Maybe I'll go back and add some effect to it. Finally, I got my hands on some goo gone and I was able to clean up the gross ring of goo along the bottom of the tube. And uh, I was so much happier when I did. It was really, really bothering me. And it looks so much better now that the tube is much clearer. It's not crystal clear. I really couldn't uh, get all of that fogginess off of it, but close enough, it looks pretty good. I'm gonna go over a lot of the panels and, and parts and pieces and hit it with a red from a, a fancy paint set that is not doing so well for me. I think if I had this to do over again, I would use some much fancier, uh, more expensive paints to get the kind of coverage I want. I had to go over this yellow uh, over and over and over again. I also, <laughs> by mistake, I didn't realize it until I was done, but I kind of created an Iron Man color, color uh, tank. Uh, Tony Stark, what are you up to, man? 
Oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm framing uh, the hero Iron Man. I'm sorry, sir. No. Uh, the color scheme was totally by accident. I I still like it, though. I, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, I found a couple of really cheap on clearance packs of decals. I was a little disappointed what, uh, with what I was able to find. I liked the danger arrows, and I tried to put a headlight on there, but it, eh. Uh, the danger arrows worked really nice. I would have loved to have found some different decal packs. If you guys have some suggestions, maybe uh, random machine-esque uh, decals, uh, uh, let me know in the comments. I'd love to uh, find some better things. I think this really could have uh, popped to the next level with some different decals all, out, uh, all over it. Anyway, it's time to hit it with my homemade wash. Uh, I was going to do just certain parts, but nah. <laughs> Time to dirty the whole thing up. I love my wash. I love uh, the way it uh, works on this kind of stuff. And it did not let me down once again. Thank you so much, homemade black wash. One of these days you'll run out and I will be forced to figure out how to make a new one. But until that day, I will just thank my lucky stars you're here to save my butt project after project. Thank you, Blackwash. I appreciate you. <laughs> uh, now it's time with the <laughs> with the Blackwash dried. I am going to do some highlights. I'm going to uh, turn back to my usual craft paints, do a light buttermilk with a sterling silver for highlights, uh, load the brush, get most of it off, and then just hit all the uh, edges and things of all of these uh, amazing texture we've gotten from all these really cool dollar store toys and bits and pieces. Any kind of uh, texture of interest, I'm just gonna catch the edges and, uh, and it's gonna pop and look fantastic. I'm really happy with how, uh, how it turned out. I am not uh, an expert painter and, and I don't often do futuristic uh, machinery type stuff but uh, I had a ton of fun doing it and I think it looks pretty cool and my favorite part about this thing is it lighting up um, I loved taking pictures of it in the dark <laughs> oh it's basing time yeah I gave up <laughs> this was supposed to be out for Halloween I'm sorry I was late and uh, and boy, I was disappointed that I did not get a video out for Halloween. I'm so sorry. Uh, so I did some gold and silver paint pens along the bottom and uh, I ended up liking it. It kind of looks all circuitry and it, uh, I don't know, I dug it. Here it is, all finished up. The lights are beaming. Uh, I need to make one more modification. The Mrs. Miss Terrain, Mrs. Terrain doesn't like the two lights in the middle. She would like me to black those out so that only uh, the top and bottom portions of the tank are illuminated. And after seeing it on film, uh, picture, and video, I agree with you, Mrs. Terrain. <laughs> You're always right, baby. <laughs> Anyway, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much. It was a blast to make. Um, I still have one more uh, craft for the mad scientist. And then, uh, uh, well, an ambitious project in mind. We'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> hey, I'm also close to 10,000 subscribers. Isn't that exciting? Uh, any suggestions on what I should do? Maybe uh, put those in the comments too. I love hearing from everyone. Thank you so much. As always, like each other, love each other, and craft on. <laughs>